I don't like it here. Well, tough. This is the only way I could get Berta to come back. But why do I have to be here? Because it's the only way you're ever going to sell your condo. <laughs> OK, let's get started. Welcome to our regular Monday night meeting. Do we have any newcomers? <laughs> My name is Charlie, and uh, my maid says I'm a sex addict. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Alan, and I have a lovely condo for sale. <laughs> and I'm a sex addict. <laughs> It's price to move. Hi, my name is Pam, and I'm a sex addict. Hi. Hi. Jake, your father's here. So how you doing? Good. Over the morning sickness? Yes, Alan. Uh, by my calculations, probably about a week, 10 days ago. That sounds right. Good, good. You have a nice break till the uh, till the old hemorrhoids come a calling. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> Judith, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? What elephant? Come on, you, me, the baby. I mean, we, we did have unprotected sex while you, you were on. We did not. <laughs> yes, we did. Read my lips. We did not have sex. Oh, hey, Al. How goes it? Oh, uh, fine, Herb. Uh, how, how you doing? Proud as a peacock. Oh, honey, did you show him the sonogram? No. Oh, you should see her, Alan. Her? So, so it is a girl. Yep. One fresh-faced little fetus. Sans wee wee. I always wanted a sans wee wee. Well, you can't have mine. <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> hey, want to see how we're decorating the nursery? He doesn't want to see the nursery, Herb. Sure, he would. You, you going with mermaids? Little girls love mermaids. Oh, actually, I was thinking little ponies. Little ponies? Yeah. Why? Oh gosh. Well, ponies have little. Really? I didn't notice that on the stencils. Let's go take a look. I'm ready. Oh, uh, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go see the baby's room. He never wants to see my room. That's because your room is a pigsty. <laughs> I didn't ask for a reason. Herb, I just thought I'd stop by and see if you needed any help with the baby's room. Thanks. I'm painting today. Oh, great. Uh, just call me Vincent Van Going to help you. <laughs> Funnier in my head. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Judith, look who stopped by to help paint the baby's room. Surprise. Herb doesn't need any help, Alan. Yes, I do. Yes, he does. <laughs> Come on, I'm just finishing up the base coat, then I'm going to start in the unicorn stencils. Unicorns? Oh, Herb, that's just a pony with a strap on. <laughs> Mia, it's Charlie. Look, you win. I'll change. No more meat, I promise. Come on, Mia, come out and smell me. Mia's not here. Do I have to smell you? Who are you? Ginger. So you're Charlie. Yeah, where's Mia? Hang on a minute. She told me to give you this if you stop by. She took a job in New York? Why'd she do that? Just read the note. <laughs> I love you too much to try to make you into something you're not. And I love me too much to settle for who you are. That's the part that always makes me cry. I can change her mind. I'll fly to New York tonight. Do you have her address? Come on in. Can I get you something to drink? No, thanks. Yeah, hi. American Airlines reservations, please. You sure? I got all my boys here. Jack, Johnny, and Jose. Maybe a uh, poquito, Jose. <laughs> Hey, are these actual baby back ribs? Yeah, help yourself. Thanks. Yeah, I'd like to make a reservation on the Red Eye to New York tonight. Hey, do you mind if I turn on the TV? I got some money on the Lakers. You bet sports? I'll bet anything. I had 200 bucks on my sister's pregnancy test. How exactly do you know Mia? Oh, we used to do the uh, ballet thing together, but I didn't have the discipline. No kidding. I still dance, but just for tips. <laughs> Huh. I'll call you back. <laughs> you know, 
know, I'm thinking she probably needs her space. Well, probably. You mind if I hang out and watch the game? Be my guest. If you got cash, I could give you a lap dance at halftime. <laughs> That'd be swell. <laughs> How long are we gonna sit here? Till she comes home. What if she spends all night with Brad? Well, then we'll be here all night. <sighs> no, 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 don't. <sighs> hey, I can <sighs> if I want to. I'm tired. And go to sleep. Without my melatonin and mouth guard? I don't think so. Car, car, car. Oh, it's them. It's them. Get down. Okay. Get down. Okay. Quick, put this on. What the hell is it? Mustache. What are you doing with a mustache in your glove compartment? Don't worry, it's fake. <laughs> that doesn't answer my question. You think you're the first guy who's ever checked up on a woman who's dumped you? Now put it on. There is a whole side to you I don't want to know anything about. Hey, that's a good look for you. It's kind of 70s porn star. I'm guessing. Look at that thing he's driving. What? It's a Prius. Well, of course it's a Prius. I'm saving the planet. Can I play with your boobies? Hey, do not put down the green lifestyle. I have worked very hard to reduce the size of my carbon footprint. You're a mooch and a miser. Don't try to make it sound hip. <laughs> All right, they're getting out of the car. Oh, do you, don't you just love how he dresses? I mean, youthful, but not trying too hard. Unlike some people. <laughs> oh, great. They're kissing. Good thing he doesn't know where her mouth has been. Wait a minute. He's getting back in his car. And there he goes. Well, denied, Mr. Greenpeace sissy pants. So did you buy this for your girlfriend because you're breaking up with her? No. Why would you think that? Because you always give jewelry to girls you're getting ready to dump. Very observant. You watch, you learn. Well, this isn't breakup jewelry. This is, I like you, stick around jewelry. What's the difference? About 1,500 bucks. <laughs> but let's back up a step. A gentleman never dumps a lady. He merely acknowledges the fact that a relationship has run its course by presenting her with a memento, a keepsake, if you will, of their time together. Remember that big blonde who threw the toaster oven at you? Yeah, I remember. Oh, and that yoga teacher who chucked the fire extinguisher through your windshield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's that actress who set fire to all your clothes. It's not a perfect system, Jake. <laughs> oh, Charlie. They're beautiful. You do realize I was going to sleep with you tonight anyway. <laughs> This is just a little bonus. Like when you get to a baseball game and find out it's helmet night. You silver-tongued devil. Well, I don't know about silver, but you'll find I am tongued. <laughs> if you ignore that, there's a matching necklace in it for you. Why don't you open the wine? Sorry, I tried to call, but your line's been busy. What do you mean my line's been busy? I haven't been on the phone. Well, I must have called 20 times. Fine. <laughs> New York tonight, and I can't take a friend. But I have company. And I have an emergency. Who are you? I'm Charlie. I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you, Brandon. I have a very demanding you know, I have a nephew about your age. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, I had a weird dream. And it's getting weirder. Hey, buddy. Why aren't you asleep? I'm hoping I am. <laughs> Hello, Jake. Hello, Miss Pasternak. Uh, listen, buddy, Miss Pasternak and I are kind of having a sleepover, because we're like, you know, friends. No way. <laughs> Jake, I'm only your teacher from 8.15 to 3 o'clock. After that, I'm just a person like anybody else. 
Oh, this is more wrong than the time I saw Santa peeing at the mall. <laughs> okay, why don't we wrap up this after-school special and call it a night? Don't worry, Jake. This won't change anything between you and me at school. So you're still gonna be mean to me? <laughs> That's right. Same old junkyard dog. Oh, buddy, get some sleep. Oh, yeah, like I'm gonna sleep now. <laughs> Do you think he'll be okay? Sure. He's just not used to seeing his teacher out of the classroom. And her pants. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll talk to him in the morning and make sure he's okay and that he keeps this to himself. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, Miss Pastern. How come you never call me by my first name? I don't know, this just seems way hotter. <laughs> All right, well, we've circled back around to hockey scores, so... Time for sex. Okay, and what kind of sex does Charlie want? Oh. Good to pick. It's kind of like Baskin Robbins. You know, if they charged $1,000 a scoop. And sprinkles are way extra. Well, I guess if I have to choose, my favorite kind of sex is makeup sex. You're kidding. Oh, it's great. Here's how we do it. I will do or say something that will really irritate you. I can imagine that happening. Then we'll have an argument, which will escalate into a fight. You'll sulk, I'll pout. Then after a couple of minutes, we'll look at each other and realize we're being silly and how lucky we are to have each other. Then I will take you in my arms and we'll hump our brains out. Fine, how do we start? Let me think. All right, go in the bathroom and look in the sink. What? Just, just, just do it, trust me. Oh God, it's disgusting. Good, go with that. Would it kill you to rinse out the sink after you shave? Sorry. All right, I forgive you. No, 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 not yet. Make me work for it. Okay. Damn it, Charlie, you're the most thoughtless man in the world. Oh, come on. I'll rinse out the sink when I brush my teeth. You haven't brushed your teeth yet? What kind of a pig are you? Nice touch. But just remember, you're not really mad about the whiskers. You're mad because I don't listen to you, and I don't like your friends, and I said snide things about your mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when do we get to the humping our brains out? Oh, we're not even close. This goes on for hours. <clears throat> Take this and pretend like you're working. Oh, sweetie, I don't have to pretend. How would you feel about slapping some greasy skin cream all over your face? Where are you going with this? I'm just talking skin cream. What do you think, I'm some kind of freak? Okay, but I'm not that kind of freak. Let me get this straight. She was his fifth grade teacher, and then she became a stripper because you dumped her, and now she's his tutor because you felt guilty. Pretty much. And you improved. You caught me at a weak moment. Well, who am I to judge? I almost traded one of my kids for a rotting lawnmower. I'm sorry, but I'm still confused. Oh, boy. Mm. Okay. Um. Let's look at it this way. How about if you make $40 a dance? If you want to find out how much you can earn per hour, you have to solve for XD times 40, X being the number of dances you can do in an hour. What about tips? That's a variable. Oh, I get it. So the money you kick back to the house is the, the constant. <laughs> good for you. That's a good start. Yeah, it was. You make learning fun. <laughs> Where are you going? Take a shower. <laughs> So how'd it go? Oh, a little slow. Not exactly the quicker picker-upper. Well, that's why he needs you. He's kind of an idiot. Yeah, um, I wasn't gonna say anything, but wow. So we'll see you tomorrow, then? Great. Hey, Charlie, thank you. For what? 
Well, you've given me back something I lost a long time ago. I gave it back? How did I give it back? My self-respect. Oh, sure, that you can get back. And you haven't even tried to hit on me. No, and I don't intend to. I just want to see you get your life together again. Boy, I've hated you for so many years. I'm starting to think maybe I was wrong. No, 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 you were right. This is new for me. Well, I like this, Charlie. He's got a big heart. Thank you. Desiree, wait. Instead of going back to that motel, why don't you stay here? No strings. Just until you can get a real apartment. Where would I sleep? You can have the guest room. Well, where would Alan sleep? If there was any justice, at the bottom of a ravine. <laughs> I can't believe you gave her my room. I can't believe you're still calling it your room. How long is this gonna last? Just until she gets back on her feet. Oh, please, that's a load of crap. That's what I said to you six years ago. You've been here six years? I'll just go make up the couch. <laughs> Story of my life. Like I spent the last half hour yodeling in a cave. I'm sorry. It wasn't you. Oh, it was, uh, it was like licking a lollipop that never gets any smaller. I mean, you enjoy it, but after a while, you start to crave the stick. Did I at least make you crave the stick? You did great. I'm just a little distracted. Is everything okay? Not really. We need to talk. Come on, I got lockjaw and you want to talk? I, I want to know where we're going with this relationship. Do we have any kind of a future? Of course we do. I mean, th things are good. Th things are great. Why rock the boat? I mean, I know the little man inside your boat could use some rocking. I I'm talking about making a long-term commitment to each other. You mean like marriage? Would that be so awful? Ask my ex-wife. Her statement in court read like a Stephen King novel. <laughs> w where is this coming from all of a sudden? It was something my gynecologist said. Are you all right? I I'm fine. He said... Everything looks great down here. Would you like to have dinner sometime? Wow, wow. Uh, that is wildly inappropriate. I mean, a a as a doctor myself. A chiropractor. I nonetheless, I am a healer. <laughs> There's a code. I mean, you don't, you don't ask someone out when they're buck naked with their feet in the stirrups. Unless you're drunk at a rodeo. Well, he did. Do you want to go out with him? It's not about going out with him. But if you and I don't have a future, I need to examine my options. The way you got examined by Dr. Busyfingers? Look, I don't want to grow old alone. So if you're not ready to make this kind of commitment, better know now. Jeez, Lindsay, you kind of sprung this on me. I mean, I don't have to give you an answer just a second, do I? No, no, of course not. Just think about it. OK. Good night. Yeah. Good night. And just for the record, he gets paid to go down there. I do it for the love of the game. Everything all right? She's pretty upset. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm such a basket case. Oh, please, we're here for you, baby. Right, Charlie? Absolutely. I guess I'll... Leave you two alone. You don't have to go. I don't? Not unless you want to. Gorp. Fnark. Chanel. Come on, Charlie. We all know what you really want to do. We do? We do. Come here. Join us. <laughs> Okay. So, what now? Do I really need to tell you? We'd probably be better off if you did. Okay. I want you to make Gail happy. <laughs> You're on board? 
It was my idea. Don't worry. She and I have done this before. In college. I knew it. <laughs> okay. Let's turn that frown upside down. That's a good boy. Hey, Charles? Yeah, babe. This is a dream, right? Of course it's a dream. You think I'm really gonna let you sleep with my best friend? Well, in that case, hang on. Cause I'm gonna do some real freaky stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I like your... Thank you. Guess you're kind of surprised to see me, huh? Yeah, shocked. Well, I hope you know it is not the kind of thing I usually do. You know, hop into bed with a fellow zippity-quick. It's really none of my business. Well, I don't. But Charlie is so sweet and special. Yep, he's a treasure. <laughs> And this works out well for you. Really? Uh, how do you figure? Since your car is still in the shop, we can carpool to and from work. I see. So, so you'll be coming back? Oh, yeah. Charlie asked me to stay the weekend. No kidding. Yep, first. We really made a connection. And it is not just physical. Although the physical part is amazing. <laughs> Again, none of my business. It is like I have known him all my life. I know the feeling. You get over it. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, yourself. Mm, do I smell toast? You do. Would you like a slice? I can put butter and jelly on it. Oh, deja vu. Ah, stop it! <laughs> Terrible! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Harper. That's okay, I wasn't even listening. I'm gonna take a shower. Hit the road in about 20 minutes. I thought you were gonna call in sick. Shush! He's kidding. It's okay. 20 minutes is fine. Great. <laughs> Alan, you know me as a cynical man, but in just one night, that little pixie has melted this cold, lonely heart. <laughs> I gotta go. I love you. I'll see you soon. Come in. Hey. Hey. I was just gonna go to bed and I wanted to see if you needed anything. Towels, sheets, <laughs> vodka. No, I'm great. Thanks. Alan got me totally gelled out with that adjustment. Man, you are so lucky to have him right here in this house. Yeah, I'm living a dream. <laughs> So listen, if you need to talk to somebody about, you know, anything, I'm here. I see that. Okay, then. Well. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? I think you're a really cool guy. Yeah? But I'm not gonna have sex with you. Ever. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Okay. Round one to the hot crazy chick. <laughs> Round two. Ding. <laughs> Morning, Frankie. Morning, Charlie. Morning. So, Frankie, boy, that is a pretty name. How'd you sleep? Great. Except, I had this wild, erotic dream, and I woke up all drenched in sweat. <laughs> Can you pass the syrup? 
Sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Sweetie, you're dull. What? <laughs> Teddy and Mom are downstairs. You're kidding. What the hell are they doing here? Apparently, you invited them. I did not. Yes, you did. On the phone, remember? Hey, on. Hi, Courtney. How you doing? Charlie, they're waiting. <laughs> yeah. We got a problem here. No, 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 sir. You got a problem. I made no promise. I broke no promise. You actually made a promise. Yeah, and I really tried to keep it. He did. I can sense his inner conflict as we were doing it in the back seat of the Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just stall them. I'll be right down. Fine, but know this, Charlie. I am not taking the fall for you. How could you take the fall for me? I don't know, but it always seems to work out that when you get laid, I get screwed. <laughs> Just go. Great. Just great. Hey, have you seen my dress? Why? I ain't going down like this. You're not going down at all. Why not? I have nothing to be ashamed of. Here, hit rewind. I'm sure you'll find something. <laughs> I myself am nutty for nipples. Let's try it on. Okie dokie, artichokey. All right, hold this. Okay. What do you think, with or without the bra? I don't know. You're the one with the nipple issues. All right, then, without. Yes, definitely without. Am I starting to say? I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Am I hanging a bit low? I don't know. Go like this. I go like this. Stop it. Give me the blouse. Oh. 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 Can you see my nipples? Oh. Yeah, you made me look at yours. You are so frisky. How does Alan ever put up with you? Better you ask, how does his mother put up with him? Um. Charles, didn't I ask you to confine your debauchery to outlet stores? Pamela, this is my mother, Evelyn. Mom, this is Pamela. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Your son is just adorable. That seems to be the conventional wisdom. I only met him and his partner last night, but we immediately hit it off. I'm sorry, his partner? Alan, his lover. His lover? God, I'm not outing you, am I? Oh, no, 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 no. Mom knows all about me and Alan, right, Mom? Of course. Alan's almost like a son to me. See, that's nice. My ex-husband's parents were not at all supportive when he came out of the closet. Oh, what a shame. What does he do? He's in advertising. Charlie writes a lot of jingles for him. Oh, I see. One hand moisturizes the other. <laughs> no, the only time Charlie was ever in the closet was when he was a little boy trying on my hats and underwear. Belting out the entire score of Hello, Dolly. <laughs> it was Mame, Mom. In fact, if anything, his lifestyle has brought us even closer. We cook together, we shop together, we go to all kinds of parties and charity events together. Uh, come to think of it, I have entered us in an Alzheimer's walkathon this Sunday. Mm, Sunday isn't really good for me. But you will be there anyway, because we support each other in all our little causes. And you love me, right? Right. Say it. I love you, Mom. And I love you, too. 8 a.m. Sunday. I'll buy us matching tracksuits. It'll be cute. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Pamela. Bye. If I didn't already know you were gay, meeting your mother would have convinced me. Are you ready for me? Mia, if I were any more ready, I'd be done. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. oh. Jeez, I'm sorry, are you okay? I think so. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine.
Are you okay? Yeah. But I think that's enough foreplay. <laughs> oh, cheer up. It wasn't that bad. There were parts of it that I liked. Oh, please not go over the game film now. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? This is supposed to be the part of the relationship that I'm good at. You are. It was fine. I don't want to hear fine. I want to see your eyes roll back and the top of your head blow off. It's not a carnival game. The object is not just to swing your mallet and ring my bell. Well, we disagree. It's just your ego talking. Charlie, listen to me. I love you, not your, your money or your car or your house or your skills in bed. What's left? Charlie. Oh, come on, come on. You're saying that if I was some pencil weenie guy living in a shack and taking the bus to my job selling oranges on the freeway off-ramp, you'd still love me? Yes, I would still love you. Okay, I understand now. Good. You're insane. <laughs> Because I love the real you? No, no, because you think there is a real me. Would you believe I loved you if my eyes had rolled back and my head had blown off? It would be a start. All right. I guess we're just gonna have to try again. Hang on, hang on. How am I gonna know you're not faking it just to make me feel better? Honey, if I was gonna fake it, don't you think I would have done it the first time? <laughs> Fair enough. Morning. Oh, Zippy, like it wasn't easy enough before. I wouldn't expect you to understand European chic. Looks more like European on a power line. Nice. Hey, tell me about that girl last night. Uh, well, she's a vegetarian. Oh, yeah? And her husband's a vegetable. What? She's married, and, and the guy's like 900 years old. You're kidding. She hot? Yeah. He rich? Mm-hmm. Checks out. <laughs> so how old is this guy? Uh, well, let me put it this way. He was one of the original investors in Apple, the fruit. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry it didn't work out. No, it worked out. You didn't. What do you want from me? He was in a coma and she was in a teddy. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you had more integrity than that. Where in the hell have you been? Man. You know what? You know what? Uh, can we just stop for a second? What's wrong? You don't know me well, but I happen to be a man of great integrity. <laughs> and. It's hard for me to do this knowing your husband is right next door. You want me to put him in a cab for a couple hours? I, I don't think that's going to help. Look, I know I'm technically taken, but you have to understand Victor was 80 when I married him. And now, 12 years later, he's still alive and we're both using machines to get us through the night. Well, how did you two even meet? I was on a pole. He was in a wheelchair. Our eyes met, and when I turned right side up, I knew he was the one. That's, that's very romantic. I can't expect you to understand what it's like to rely on someone to put a roof over your head and provide you with the luxurious life you deserve. Oh, my God, we're soulmates. <laughs> For some mulled cider, m'lady. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, but I can't. I take hormones, and the acid in the cider makes my beard grow. God, you are so lucky. I wish I could grow a beard. <laughs> oh, look what else I have. A uh, sprig of mistletoe. OK, great. Game's in overtime. Mwah! Come on! <laughs> I had the craziest day at the mall today. You heard me about the overtime, right? You heard me about the mall, right? Darn it. <sighs> Is everything okay down there? Huh? Oh, my bad. I got phantom nuts. 
<laughs> you can scratch mine if you want. Hey, Paula, I'm just... Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you had company. No, no, come on in. Uh, Rachel, this is Alan. Alan, this is Mike's wife. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know you were married. Uh, then again, I didn't know you had a penis. So. <laughs> she lost them both at about the same time. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alan. Oh, uh, you too. Uh, it's really great that you guys are still friends. Yeah, and thankfully, the same shoe size. Oh. By the way, those silver platforms that you lent me really did a number on my back. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're in luck. Alan here is one of the top chiropractors in Los Angeles. Well, I was named uh, uh, one of the top chiropractors to watch by the Personal Injury Lawyer Trade Association. So. <laughs> now, let's talk about your date. You need to get your ducks in a row before we get to the restaurant. What do you mean? Well, if this little girl's important to you, it'd behoove you to have a plan. Behoove? It would benefit you. Oh, yeah, sure. What was that thing about ducks? It's just an expression. Well, it's confusing. Sorry. You can't get them in a row. I know, I know. Now, just listen to me. They're ducks. Right. They move willy-nilly. Shut up. Whoa. It would behoove you to speak nicer to me. I swear to God, I will open the sunroof, pick you up with one hand, and toss you into the carpool lane. You know, there's no reason we couldn't be in the carpool lane. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm listening. Thank you. Now, three rules. Number one, dinner with a beautiful woman is never about food. I know, it's about making her like me. Very good. But there will be food, right? Yes. Because I'm not at my best when I'm hungry. Jake, you need to focus here. It would behoove me to focus. <laughs> Sorry, what are the other two rules? Number two, eat with your mouth closed. Number three, pray she has low self-esteem. Number three isn't a rule. For you, it is. Fine. Well, let's go over my three rules. You've got rules? Number one, I'd like you not to call me Mr. Potato Head or SpongeBob Smearpants. <laughs> about Sir Farts a lot. No. Number two, I think it'd be better if I call you Charlie rather than Uncle Charlie. So that way we'd be more like equals. So if we're equals, does that mean you're gonna split the check with me? <laughs> I knew you said that, Charlie. And number three? Oh, there's only two. I miscounted. Hey. Oh, hey, where you been? Out on the beach. So? How'd it go? Fine. I'm getting her grape soda. No, 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 no. You don't bring the grape soda to her. You bring her to the grape soda. Her who? Hang on. You bring her here. She sees your beautiful house. She thinks you got it going on, and then you got a shot at... <laughs> well, I don't know what you got a shot at, but you got a shot. <laughs> whoa, 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 catch me up. You see what I'm saying? So, I should bring her here? Absolutely. Women love this house. It's an aphrodisiac. I don't think she's afro anything. <laughs> she's more like Chinese. Well, who's Chinese? What's going on? He met a girl on the beach, and I'm helping him out. What about Celeste? Uncle Charlie said my life shouldn't stop just because she's not around. So you're encouraging my son to cheat on his girlfriend? Oh, come on. There's no cheating going on. Are you cheating? I'm not sure. You're not cheating. <laughs> yes, he is. I mean, how would you feel if Celeste was somewhere right now flirting with some other guy? How do you know she's not? She's with her mom. And you're with your dad, but that's not stopping you, is it? Good point. No, no, it's a lousy point. Relationships are built on trust and mutual respect. Oh, grow up. Relationships are built on diamond earrings and Viagra. <laughs> now go take the young lady her grape soda. I still think it would help if I had some corn dog money to flash around. Go. Shame on you. What's the big deal? It's not like he and the Celeste girl are sleeping together. No, no, but I think that once a relationship reaches any physical level, there's an implied commitment. Yeah, that's because you married the first girl who touched your wiener. Uh, not true. Uh, the first girl who touched my wiener was Maxine Chernikoff, and she refused to marry me. As did the blind girl at camp, the school nurse, and crazy cousin Wendy. I hope you're proud of yourself. I'm more proud of him. 
I mean, he actually got her back here without hitting her over the head and stuffing her in a burlap sack. So, what's up? Ow! Nipple! I am so mad at you. Why? Because I I'm with Larry now. He's smart, handsome, successful. God, you have a type. No. When I'm with him, I can't stop fantasizing about you. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm confused. I'm getting a chubby, but I'm confused. So, you want to get back together? Oh, God, no. I just want to have sex with you. Why? And why am I asking? I don't know. I just know that I do. Of course. Mm. Forbidden fruit is so much sweeter. Go on. Pluck my forbidden fruit. Mm. Pop my cherry. Peel my banana. Squeeze my fuzzy peaches. You know, fantasy? Yeah? You don't talk. Lynn. Bye, Walden. Bye, Lindsay. Whoo! <laughs> um, is it hot in here or did I just have sex? Did you guys get back together? Better. She wants nothing from me except the old Harper harpoon. <laughs> know what I'm saying? How is it possible that you're having sex and I'm not? Something about a uh, trailer in Sun Valley? Are we in Idaho? <laughs> no mountains, no snow. <laughs> Why are you wearing my underwear? Why are you wearing mine? Oh boy. <sighs> Let's just go. Should we leave her a little note? What? You know, thank you. Maybe my phone number. Are you crazy? Just keep moving. But she's cute, and I'm gonna need a plus one for your wedding. Oh, my God, my wedding. Oh, you're right, it could be awkward. <laughs> she really does look familiar. Terrific. Just don't drop her. Can't wait to tell my friends about this. You're not telling anybody about this. What's the point of doing it if I can't tell anybody? You've got 20 bucks in a memory now. Shut up. OK, we've got to get her in the car. You want me to pull it around? No, I don't want you to pull it around. Okay, well then you pull it around, I'll stay here with her. Be very careful. Come on, let's finish this upstairs. Move, move, move. Chelsea, wait. What? Yeah, I'm so happy you're back. Hey, oh, hey, Alan. Is the trash out? Uh, almost. Almost, ain't gonna cut it. Did you at least clean out my room? Yes, I did. <laughs> good, good. OK, well, good night. Uh, Charlie, can I talk to you for a sec? <laughs> About what? Um, uh, recycling. I'm not quite sure what to do with the 
big jugs. <laughs> oh, honey, once you go up and get comfortable, and I'll be right there. All right. I will. Okay, first you need to separate the plastic from the glass. Then when you get to the newspaper, what the hell is your problem? Wonder what they're serving at the domestic dealerships. <laughs> they do take good care of you here. Of course, they ought to, considering what we paid for our cars. Oh, yeah, they are expensive. Is that your CL65 outside? Uh, yes, it is mine. How do you like it? What's not to like? Does everything but trim your toenails. <laughs> or maybe it does, and I just haven't found the button yet. <laughs> not that I need to trim my toenails. Did them last night. Over the tub. Clip, ping, clip, ping. Damn. Oh, Alan. <laughs> so you live around here, Alan? Ah, uh, no, I live uh, down by the beach. Santa Monica? Uh, Malibu. Ooh, Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Malibu. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just call it the boo. You know, like, hey, how are things down at the boo? Mr. Harper, your car is ready. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll be right there. Well, uh, looks like I'm all done here. Guess I'll uh, head back to the boo. Don't rub it in. Let me put it this way. I'm taking your mother to lunch on Thursday. <laughs> You're doing what? I'm not going to participate in this childish little feud of yours. <laughs> It's not a childish feud. Boy. Come on, Charlie. What's wrong with me having a warm and healthy relationship with your mother? Well, for starters, you'll be the only one. <laughs> Ever. Oh, don't be so dramatic. No, 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 no. I'm not being dramatic enough. I should be wearing tights and holding a skull. <laughs> Preferably hers. It's just lunch. That's what Hitler said to Czechoslovakia. Hitler said it's just lunch? Well, he said it in German. Watch the History Channel. Charlie, I'm not doing this to hurt you. Did you ever think that by my spending time with your mother, I can get a better understanding of you? Chelsea, trust me. Any insight you gain into me via my mother will end our relationship faster than catching me in bed with a farm animal. <laughs> Just relax, it'll be fine. That's what Hitler said to Poland. <laughs> and for the record, as long as we've been going out, I've never met your mother. My mother's in Illinois. Oh yeah, and my mother's in Italy. My mother really lives in Illinois. And besides, when you meet her, you will count your blessings you have someone as wonderful as your mom. Tell you what. I'll trade you, sight unseen, my mom for you. I'll even throw in Allen and a couple of Omaha steaks. You don't have to be a prisoner of depression. Unlock the door of darkness and despair and step into the sunlight with Lumetrol. If you're taking an MAO inhibitor, consult your physician. <laughs> you should try that stuff. What for? I'm not depressed. Really? Why not? <laughs> what have I got to be depressed about? Well, you've been divorced twice, you're living on your brother's couch, and your only child is flunking 10th grade. <laughs> you're flunking 10th grade? When the hell did this happen? Oh, easy, dude. I think you got bigger things to worry about. Charlie, you're being a complete ass about this. I said no. End of discussion. Yeah, that'll do it. It's just a couple of dance lessons so we don't look like idiots at our wedding. Hey, I have said yes to everything having to do with this stupid wedding, but this is too much. You think our wedding is stupid? If I have to dance, it is. You know what? Just drop dead. Fine. I'll drop dead and you can dance on my grave. <laughs> you do know you're going to be taking dancing lessons. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Does that depress you? A little. May I suggest you try Lumatrol? What? Unless you're already taking an MAO inhibitor, in which case, consult your physician. Hard to believe he's flunking 10th grade. Hey. Hey. 
Did you cave on the dancing? Yeah. You have to grovel. Like a leper at a kissing booth. Did you at least get makeup sex? Nope. Wow, it's like you're already married. Yeah, I might as well just give her my testicles right now and use the empty sack as a man purse. Hey, hey, don't knock the man purse. Terrific way to carry your keys, chapstick, sunblock, moist wipes. Please move out of my house. Hey, face it, big brother. We are a team. Like Ernest and Julio Gallo. Seriously, get some cardboard boxes, fill them with your crap, and go. No, see, that's just misdirected anger. You're not mad at me. You're mad at yourself for trading your dignity and self-respect for security, peace of mind, and regular sex. Where do you get that? I've been married twice, Julia. <clears throat> the key is to make the best of it. Uh, like with the dance lessons, for instance. They, they can be fun. You and Chelsea practicing, learning to glide across the dance floor as a single organism, embracing the music like the breath of life itself. Okay, first decorate my house, then move out. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about on your wedding day, when you step out onto the dance floor with your new bride and sweep her into your arms with everybody watching. Sorry, I can't see it. Let me... Hi. Hey, Jay. What are you doing up? Why shouldn't I be up? Well, isn't it a little past your bedtime? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a bedtime. <laughs> okay. So what's going on? Too much. Where's your dad, Jake? I don't know. Why don't you go look for him? <laughs> look, Jake, me and I are kind of busy right now. Busy doing what? Talking. OK. What are we talking about? We are not talking about anything. You're going to bed. Why don't we let me decide? Jake, sweetheart, I think you should go to bed. Are you sure? You don't have to decide right now. <laughs> Your uncle and I would like to spend some alone time together. Oh. All right. You want me to tuck you in? I'm too old to get tucked in, you... you ass face! <laughs> okay, then. Sleep tight, little camper. <laughs> kids, huh? Yeah, kids. He never called me an ass face before. <laughs> I think he's a little jealous. Yeah. I remember feeling like that when I was his age. Really? Cafeteria lady. You asleep? You can quit faking. I took her home. Really? <laughs> yeah. How come? It's part of the guy code. When two friends like the same girl, one of them has to step aside. Unless she's a good sport, in which case it's like Saturday morning at the bakery. It's a complicated code. Don't worry about it. Bottom line is, I'm out of the Mia business. Cool. Now go to sleep. Uncle Charlie? Yeah? I'm sorry I called you an ass face. Well, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> nice party. Thanks. So give me the lay of the land. You mean, who in this land can you lay? If you will. All right. Hot redhead by the bar. That's Wanda. Recently came out of a terrible marriage. Nice, nice. What else you got? Pretty blonde on the couch. That's Terry. She divorced her husband to be a lesbian. How's that working out for Terry? See the dirty look she's giving Wanda? Oh, I think I see an opening. And by that you mean? I wasn't being subtle. I see an opening. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Anything good in my life, you have to take it away. Oh, Charlie, you're so funny and so clever. Why don't I lean forward so you can look down my dress and see my boobies? <laughs> Why, thank you. I believe I will. So, do you want to have sex now or wait until after the party? You don't mind that I'm carrying most, if not all, communicable diseases known to man? Oh, no, Charlie. That's part of your charm. Come, take me on the couch. 
Are you sure? It's not scotch guarded. No matter. We'll scotch guard it with our love. Sorry we're running late. That's all right. Shower lasted a bit longer than I planned. Yeah, well, uh, that happens. I gotta tell you, I am just crazy about your brother. Swell. Hope it works out. Now, how is a guy like that still single? Well, uh, he's always been a bit of a butterfly, you know, fluttering through life, hard to pin down. And being a fall-down drunk is kind of a speed bump for some of the ladies. <laughs> Such a jokester, Dr. Harper. <laughs> Either that or put a gun in my mouth. Oh, listen, on the way home tonight, we have to swing by my apartment so I can get some clothes for the weekend. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to need a little extra time for lunch today. I'm going to buy some sexy lingerie. <laughs> For you, know. I do. Can I pick you up anything? Yeah, yeah. Um, earplugs would be nice. Um, and that gun I mentioned. Nothing special. I'm only going to use it just the once. Man. Hey, Jake. Hey, gotta hit the crapper. Thinking of chewing your arm off? What? No, no, no. Why would I do that? I don't know. Maybe because you're not horny anymore and you just remembered I'm staying through the weekend? You got all that from the twitching of my shoulder muscles? I have those muscles too, Charlie. Okay. Good to know. Well, to be honest, I, uh, I did have a momentary panic reflex, but it passed, and I'm actually happy you're here. You sound surprised. Surprise doesn't begin to cover it. <laughs> Normally, at this point in a relationship, I'm busy plotting the appropriate exit strategy. For example? Well, <clears throat> that would depend on whether I'm trying to get rid of you just for today or forever. Let's say today. Okay, today, I have to see my dermatologist about a little rash. Oh, that's good. All right, what about forever? Turns out it wasn't a rash. Men, 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 manly men.